We often face issues while building a resume as it not just tells a story about you but also builds up an impression about you. So to make a good impression, it's imperative that your resume must stand out from the rest of the crowd. Hi all, I am Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on RPA Developer's Resume. In this session guys, I'll help you create an impressive RPA Developer Resume with the help of which you can stand out from the crowd. On that note, let's take a look at the topics for today's session. So we'll start today's session by understanding who is an RPA Developer and then I'll discuss the RPA Developer's salary trend. After that, I'll talk a little bit about the job description of an RPA Developer and then I'll tell you the skills required for this role. Once that is done, I'll tell you the steps to build the resume and finally, I'll show you a sample RPA Developer Resume. I hope the topics are clear to you guys. Alright, so that's great. But before I start with the session, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel to get daily notified on the top trending technologies. On that note, let's get started with the first topic for today's session that is who is an RPA Developer. Now, as we all know that robotic process automation is a technology wherein we have to automate tasks using the RPA tools present in the market. Now the tools could be either UiPath, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere or any other further tools, right? But RPA developers are designers of those automation tasks with hands-on experience in the top tools. They work for startups to hypergrowth companies and are responsible for designing the automation based on the client's requirement. Now, even after that, once the automation is designed and is ready to be rolled out into the production, an RPA developer has to make sure that it is achieving the desired results. In case the designed automation fails to achieve the desired goals, the automation goes back into the RPA lifecycle. So if you want to know more about RPA lifecycle, you can refer to my session on RPA lifecycle. But apart from that, guys, you just have to understand that an RPA developer is someone who has knowledge about robotic process automation and is inquisitive to automate tasks using various tools. On that note, let's look into the next topic for today's session that is RPA developer's salary. Now, according to Indeed.com, the salary of an RPA developer estimated from around 30,000 users, employees, and past and present job advertisements in the past 36 months. The average salary of an RPA developer ranges from around 5,31,000 per year for a developer to 7,29,000 per year for a senior developer. Apart from this, if you look into the stats of United States, then according to Indeed.com again, the salary of an RPA developer estimated from around 18,000 users, employees and past and present job advertisements in the past 36 months. The average salary of an RPA developer ranges from around $92,000 per year for a developer to $96,000 per year for a senior consultant. Now guys, that's a huge amount of money. So anybody who is willing to shift their career from, you know, maybe testing backgrounds or maybe non IT backgrounds to something more interesting to something where you can automate tasks in front office processing and also in the back office processing, then I would say RPA is the career that you must choose. Now, if you're wondering what could be the job description of an RPA developer, then let me take you to the job description of this particular role. So moving on to the next topic for today's session, that is the job description of an RPA developer. Now, while building a resume, the first thing that you must keep in your mind is to basically build a resume by looking at the job description of the job role. So as you can see on my screen, so this is a sample job description based on the details provided by various companies. So as you can see on my screen, the sample job description says that, you know, you must have top notch skills in .NET, C hash and web scripting. You should have hands on experience in top RPA tools like UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. You should also have a solid understanding of good documentational skills and should be able to conceptualize a business process from a workflow diagram to an automated solution. Apart from that, you should have aggressive problem diagnosis and creative problem solving skills with basic knowledges of SQL databases or different database management systems. You should also have strong code review skills and must have an exposure to test driven development and must be also proficient in troubleshooting, handling security issues and system analysis. Finally, you should have excellent communication and analytical skills with the ability to present technical details to the clients in technical and non technical backgrounds and must also have an exposure to design and define enterprise level application architectures and evaluate the design automation. So guys, these were a few key points in the job description. If you look into any job description for an RPA developer. So now that I've told you who is an RPA developer, the salary trends of an RPA developer and also the job description for an RPA developer. Let's discuss the skills required for an RPA developer. So as I said before, 
An RPA developer is someone who has the ability to understand the client's requirements and design the automation based on those requirements and the IT standards. So some of the common skills required for an RPA developer are as you can see on my screen. An RPA developer must have hands-on experience in top RPA tools like UiPath, Bluepism and Automation Anywhere. So over here I would like to tell you one thing that we have partnered with Automation Anywhere and then we have certification trainings on UiPath and Automation Anywhere. So if you're someone who is interested to get certified in UiPath and Automation Anywhere and then you want to get a proper training and a hands-on experience in these tools, go check out our curriculum on edureka.co. Now moving on in the session, apart from the hands-on experience in the top RPA tools, an RPA developer must have strong problem-solving skills and analytical skills. Also, he or she must have constant communication with other business partners to develop and deploy their ideas to ensure that you know there is a clear establishment of what can be created within what time frame and what are its requirements. Also, an RPA developer must have good knowledge of the RPA lifecycle and must understand how to produce the automation and also must equally have an understanding or an exposure to the different databases. Moving on to the next point, an RPA developer must also know how to design technical specific documentations for various RPA projects and must have experience with analysis and design and implementation of the process. So basically, an RPA developer must have the skills to understand the business and the technical requirements. Finally, I would say that you know an RPA developer must also have proficient coding skills in .NET, C hash and web scripting to understand how the automation workflow works in the background, right? So if you work on any tool, you would see that you know you do not require much of coding skills because it's just drag and drop in all the tools. But the problem over here is that you know when you work in industries or on large scale enterprise projects, you have to understand how your automation works in the background and how it collaborates with other systems or maybe other platforms, right? So over there, you'll need these coding skills of .NET, C hash and web scripting as these tools are based on these programming languages. Last but not the least, I would say an RPA developer must have a basic understanding of Lean Six Sigma process methodologies and also could be certified in, you know, various certifications like ITIL, TOGAF, COBIT, PMP, Prince2 and so on, right? So basically these certifications will add on to your team management. Now over here I would like to tell you that it's not necessary that you know you need a proper certification like you know ITIL, TOGAF and so on, right? It's not a necessary skill that is required for an RPA developer but yes, if you're someone who is aiming to become an RPA developer at a higher level of management then I would say these certifications will definitely add value to your resume. So I hope that you've understood the skills required for an RPA developer. So now that you know what are the skills required, let's get into how to build a resume for an RPA developer. Now the steps to build a resume are really simple. You can basically follow two approaches, that is the functional approach and the chronological approach. So in the functional approach, what happens is that you know you mention your experience based on the job role that you're applying for. Coming to the chronological approach, over here you mention your experience based on how it took place, right? So maybe you're shifting your domain completely. So in your resume, you can mention all the projects that you have worked in your past domain. So that's how guys you can basically follow two approaches that is the functional approach and the chronological approach. Now it's completely based on you which approach you choose. But whichever approach that you choose, I would like to mention that you know you have to mention a few points that I'm going to discuss right now for an RPA developer's resume. So the points that you have to make sure are fulfilled while building a resume are as you can see on my screen. Your resume must be concise and clear in terms of formatting. The introduction about yourself must be kept simple and should be up to the point without writing big, big paragraphs. You should mention up to date information on the resume. Now, this could be either your educational qualifications, experience, or the projects that you've worked on, right? So, up to date information must be present on your resume. Apart from that, for professionals with experience less than eight years, the resume should not be longer than one page. And professionals with two plus years experience must definitely opt for a functional resume as they're just looking for a change, right? So I would say it's better to mention the projects related to the job role that you're applying for. Now, apart from this, if you're an experienced professional, then mention your latest job role along with the projects that you've worked on in the previous organization. And if you're a fresher, then make sure that you know you justify your role in the projects that you mentioned. Also, give priority to the skills according to your particular job role that you're applying for and list the activities and mention your role in that particular activities. Finally, mention the technical skills that you have and also do not forget to mention your hobbies and achievements as you know these add an extra value to your resume. So guys, these are a few points that you have to remember while building a resume. 
So now that I've told you the basic points to build a resume, let's talk specifically about an RPA developer's resume. So moving on to the final topic for today's session, that is an RPA developer sample resume. Now for an RPA developer sample resume, apart from your name and personal details, the first section should be your work experience. Well, this is generally recommended to quickly draw the attention of the recruiter. So this will basically state the responsibilities that you've taken and your learnings from them in a crisp and a clear manner. So my suggestion to you to build up a resume is as you can see on my screen. You can divide your resume into different parts like you know designation name of organization duration of employment job responsibilities in brief and your learning or experience from your past job. So if you ask me how does a sample RPA developer resume look then you can see on my screen. I've just mentioned the introduction in a very crisp manner which says an RPA developer with n plus years of hands on experience in automating processes using RPA software to drive the improvement in the processes of analytics and customers team. So please remember that you know you have to use few keywords or you can say few important terms in the introduction so that you know the introduction looks clear and crisp as I said before and also describes about yourself that you know you have so much of hands on experience in what all tools and also what teams have you worked for. After that you can mention your educational qualifications in a chronological order. So in this section I would always suggest you to start from your you know post graduation if you have a post graduation or a graduation and then go to your higher school education that is 11th 12th and then go to your school education till 10th. So you mention your post graduation and then you mention your graduation and then you mention your qualifications about your higher school education and then the school education, right? So it's always good to maintain a chronological order as you know, people will be very interested into what masters that you've done or what graduation that you have done to the recent times. Now after you mention your education qualifications in the chronological order, you have to mention your work experience. Now in this particular section, you can mention the designation, the name of organization, the duration of employment and the responsibilities that you had in that particular job role. Now this particular section must also be present in a chronological order. So for example, let's say for the past two years, I'm working in a company, then I'll mention all the projects or maybe all the work experience related to that particular company in a chronological order. So let's say I've worked from June 2017 to 2019 in a specific company. So over here in this particular mention, I'll mention all the details related to it in a chronological order. After that, I'll talk about my past experiences. Let's say I have more than five years of experience. So after the first section, I'll move on to the second section where I'll talk about the other employment period. So as you can see on my screen, I've just mentioned the sample work experience. So I've not mentioned anything in the designation in the name of organization and the duration of employment as it's really simple to mention. But in the responsibility section, you can mention your role in the organization with a few pointers that I'm going to discuss now. So these could be to define and design the end to end project plans with various execution team. You can also mention how you would evaluate current processes and examine various ways to re engineer the process to satisfy the client's requirement along with the company standards. You can also mention that you know you have worked closely with the individual project team to gather the project status, establish a dashboard to track the project progress and check the automation state at all stages of the RPA life cycle. Not only this, but you can also mention that you know you have worked with various teams to prioritize and troubleshoot problems and know how to provide security for the automation that you have created. So these are few points that you can mention guys, but yes, it's not necessary that you know you mention only these points, but it's completely based on what job role and what responsibilities that you had in your work experience. The points that I had mentioned were just for an example so that you understand how to mention your responsibilities in a clear manner. Now after the work experience comes the technical skills section. So over here you can mention various technical skills that you have. So for example, I've mentioned over here that you know good hands on knowledge on .NET C hash and VB scripting. Then I've talked about the hands on experience in various automation tools like UiPath, Blue Prism and automation anywhere. Then also you can mention the certification names if you're certified in. And then also mention that you know you have proficient knowledge in SQL databases. Now these are few basic technical skills that you know an RPA developer must have. But yes, if you have more technical skills than this, then that's well and good. Go forward and mention in your resume and definitely that will add a value to your resume. After that, you have to mention the projects that you've worked on. So over here you can mention all the projects that are relevant for the job role that you're applying for. And finally, you can mention your achievements and hobbies. So over here you'll mention all the co-curricular and non-co-curricular activities that you've participated in or maybe you've won any competitions and so on. So that's how guys basically you can build an RPA developers resume. 
Well, these were a few key points that I think you know are important to build an RPA developers resume with that we come to an end to this particular session. I hope you found the session informative. So if you're someone who's looking forward to shift your career to robotic process automations domain, then I would say go forward and check out the various roles available in this particular domain and get a hands on experience in the top RPA tools. So on that note guys, I end my session today. So if you have any further queries related to the session, please comment in the comment section below. Until then, that's all from my side today. Thank you and happy learning.